First there was me and darkness. For, for light to exist, there must be dark. But I existed before him, and I never requested of him what in me is dark, illumine. Ironic that he thought of me as black and himself as the purveyor of light. So he set about to conquer my darkness, discipline my waywardness, and establish order. And he birthed from me his heavens, his white clouds, translucent kingdom, drew dark matter from my womb and molded his universe. And from the pure empyrean where he sits, high throned above all heights, he bent down his eye, his own works and their works at once to view. Thus, he created his glass observatory from where he could watch with pleasure his bright angels, of which the fairest was Lucifer, brilliant, brilliant angel of light, brightest of all in heaven. But the mind is its own place, and in itself can make a heaven of hell and a hell of heaven, for before he decreed them separate places and proclaimed himself God, there were no such spaces demarcated. And to Lucifer, who with all his host of rebel angels by whose aid aspired to set himself in glory above his peers, this allocated space of heaven felt closeted and suffocating, confined. Thus his overreaching mind made of heaven a hell himself, trusted to have equal God the Most High, and for his ambitions him the almighty power hurled headlong flaming from the ethereal skies, with hideous ruin and combustion down to bottomless perdition. In adamantine chains and penal fire such place eternal justice had already prepared for those rebellious, and named it hell. But hell too is a space, so did the fallen Lucifer claim as his the infernal world which God to them had consigned. There he created his pandemonium, and swore to corrupt that other world, rumoured to be the happy seat of some new race called man. And thus, into this wide womb of uncreated night, this wild abyss of neither sea nor shore nor air nor fire, through this dark illimitable ocean without bound, without dimension, the arch fiend crossed, for his passage lay through me. Long is the way and hard that out of hell leads up to light, but all is not lost, the unconquerable will remains. First he tries to enter, steep wilderness whose hairy sides with thicket overgrown, grotesque and wild, but to him access was denied. And in the black mist he finds fatally the serpent, chosen, doomed for just another space that Satan claimed for his own. So on he fares, and on to the border comes of Eden, where delicious paradise, now nearer, crowns with her enclosure green, Adam's abode, those lofty shades his bower. And overhead up grew insuperable heights of loftier shade, cheddar and pine and fir and branching palm, a sylvan scene. The tree of knowledge grew fast by, knowledge of good, bought dear by knowing ill. Of all the trees in paradise that bear delicious fruits so various, God had bidden man not to taste that only tree. And in the serpent's shape the fiend saw undelighted all delight, all kind of living creatures new to sight and strange, and to a far nobler shape. Adam and Eve, the mind the mind, in itself able to make a hell of heaven. With nothing but an apple, Satan knew he could disrupt the space of paradise, for God's first rule was unquestioning obedience. He tempted her mind, her body yielded. Then, of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree, whose mortal taste brought death into the world and all their woe, with loss of Eden, till one greater man restored them and regained the blissful seat. Sing, Heavenly Muse.